Good day, everyone. I am Miss Mbele for Report 191 Management Communication and 4. We continue with our lessons. Today, lessons is Module 1, Basic Communication Principles. We are still using the same uh, textbook and for communication and management communication, say it in plain English by Wade and Stiengamp. For this lesson, we are going to consider page 1 to page 15 of our textbooks. Lesson 1, Module 1. In this module, we are going to cover the following topics. What is communication? Communication process and communication model. Categories of communication, factors that influence communication. Let us look at the communication process. When we talk about communication process, we need to ask ourselves, what is communication? According to Wade and Stiengamp, communication is a two-way process whereby information is sent from one person through a channel to another who in return provide feedback. So when we are communicating, we are sending information or a message from one person who is a sender to another person who is a receiver. And the receiver has to give back a feedback or an answer to show that they have received and understood the message. There are elements of communication that we need to um, understand and know when we are dealing with the communication process. There is a sender, a person who creates the message. There is an, uh, the, the sender will need to encode or create the message or formulate the message. Then there is a message, which is the information that is being con uh, conveyed, which is the content of uh, our uh, communication. And then there is a channel, which is the medium of uh, communication, whereby we choose whether we use voices as I am speaking to you. I am using my voice, also the devices that we have, our cell phones, our computers. Then uh, as a person who is listening, and also receiving the information, you are the receiver. You will need to interpret and respond to the message that has been sent to you. When you are interpreting, we say that you decode the message in order to um, understand it. Then you give back a feedback, which is your reply. During the communication process, you might find that there are communication barriers or interferences, which is noise. The noise might be a ringing te telephone, a noise might be a knock at the door, a noise might be the, the car that is uh, going past your classroom when you are, um, are learning. So it's very important to know that during the uh, communication process, there might be interferences or barriers that can cause communication breakdown. You will need to read page two of your textbook in order to understand the importance of effective communication. Let us look at the communication model. We've spoken about the communication process uh, where we said that the sender will need to um, create the message, send it through a channel to the receiver who will also need to interpret the message, send it back through a channel as well, send a feedback through a channel to the um, a receiver. That is the communication model. Uh, if you look at this communication model, I've shown you here certain things. Um, the sender is the main person. It starts from the sender. Then from the arrow that goes to the message is a channel. A channel can be uh, a telephone message, a telephone that is being used. It can be um, voice, vocal cords that are being used, face-to-face -face communication. It can be uh, through an email, it can be uh, through a letter. A channel is the means or medium of communication. Then the message, which is the information that is being sent, then it goes through to the receiver, and the receiver will need to decode, interpret uh, the message in order to be able to understand what the, the sender is saying and be able to send back uh, a feedback. The feedback will be sent uh, via the channel. You can use the same um, uh, medium of communication that the sender has sent to you um, using uh, either it, it's a telephone, uh, email, letter, 
face-to-face -face communication using your vocal cords then you send back your um your 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 answer in that way we say that uh, communication was successful but let's say along the way while you are busy communicating with um, with the sender there is a barrier a telephone ringing someone knocking at the door and interfere with your communication process that we call it noise barriers or interferences that will cause a communication breakdown and you end up not understanding or not having all the communication that you were supposed to um, receive. So when you are writing your exams, you will need to have your pencil, your pen, your ruler, and your highlighter. Remember we said for your highlighter, you highlight all the information that is in your background. For your ruler and your pencil, if you are requested to graphically illustrate the communication process in a means of a graph or a model, this is what you will be required to do. And if it's eight marks, it means one mark for the noise because the noise can happen while the sender is sending the message or it can happen when the, uh, the receiver is sending back the, the, the reply or the feedback back to the sender. That is our communication model. Categories of communication. There are four categories of communication. There's interpersonal communication, intrapersonal communication, extra personal communication and mass communication intrapersonal communication is when you are speaking with oneself when you are thinking it's intra it's centered to you you are the sender and receiver of the message at the same time the interpersonal communication is when you are communicating with two or more people like in case of our teaching and learning i am the sender of the message I am communicating to the masses. I am I'm communicating to the class a group that I am teaching. So that is interpersonal communication. We are having an interview or a class or a meeting. That is an example of an interpersonal communication. Extra personal communication. It's where you speak with an object or a plant. Uh, that is uh, where you are like when you speak to your, your dog, your dog uh, reply to you, but you don't understand their language. That is extra personal communication. There is mass communication whereby the sender is speaking to a large number of people. It might be through a device, let's say a television or a radio, or through um, an intercom whereby you'll find that during elections, uh, the, the, the political parties will go around uh, speaking to the masses, inviting them to come to the a stadium or to a certain venue in order to get information. Those are the types of um, categories of communication. Factors that influence communication. There are so many factors that can uh, uh, influence communication. It can be personality, frame of reference, reasoning, emotions, and meaning. When we talk about personality, you need to think about the people that you are speaking to them. Are they shy or are they pushy? Are they the introvert or extrovert? People that can be able to um, receive in your information. Frame of reference, you must make sure that whenever you're speaking to your, um, to your audience, you must know who are you talking to are you talking to the people that are well educated then you need to choose your language very well are you speaking to a cultural group then you will know which type of, of culture are they and then you respect them accordingly um, reasoning you need to think before you speak think and plan before you speak whatever the ways that you are going to use so that your um, people will be able to receive the message, make sure that, that you choose them correctly. Emotions, when you are speaking on a very touchy subject, you must always control your emotions and make sure that you have tact when you are speaking to other people. Use your words or phrases that the other person can easily understand. Do not use jargon or slang when you are speaking to the audience that is meaning language and semantic barriers that we are talking about when we talk about slang or jargon you will need to do a practical activity i've given you some questions that you will need to consider what is communication you might find that out of six marks 
you will need to give us a definition of what is communication. The question can be set as what is communication or define communication process for six marks. Six marks, then you will need to consider things such as your um a, a, a communication process, the elements of communication, such as the sender, the receiver, the message, the feedback, uh, the channel, the noise, and also decode and also encode. Uh, decode and also encode the message as well. Those are the things that when you are graphically illustrating the, 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 the communication model, you will consider. You will need to name and describe all the elements in the communication process. We have spoken about them. Name five advantages of effective communication. What are the advantages you will need to go and read uh, from page 3 to page 15 of your textbooks so that you will find the advantages of effective communication. What is the difference between interpersonal and, and intrapersonal communication? So you will need to know the difference between the two. Read page 9 of your textbook. Thank you very much for uh, listening. Uh, enjoy, enjoy your studies. We will see each other in, less, in module 2. Enjoy. Thank you.